do Christians have to go through sufferings? 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 15 tells us that, For let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or a meddler in other men's matters. Thus, this is not about sufferings due to the consequences or as a result of one's wrongdoings or sins, but rather, about sufferings because of our belief in Christ. Now take heart, here are seven reasons provided in the scriptures. Reason 1. To test to us and our faith in Christ. 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 12 and 13 mention that. Beloved, don't be astonished at the fiery trial which has come upon you to test you, as though a strange thing happened to you. But because you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, rejoice, that at the revelation of his glory you also may rejoice with exceeding joy. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 6 and 7 add that. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Thus sufferings serve as a test for us Christians, and our faith in Christ. Don't be surprised, but be ready instead. The Lord is our God. Reason 2. To make us strong, firm and steadfast. 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 9 to 11 tell us to Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. Yes, sufferings will make us strong, firm and steadfast. Don't fret, but be steadfast instead. He is the God of all grace. Reason 3 to share in Christ's sufferings and glory. Luke chapter 24 verse 26 reminds us that Didn't the Christ have to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Romans chapter 8 verses 17 and 18 add that And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed toward us. Acts chapter 5 verses 40 and 41 provide us an example. They agreed with him. Summoning the apostles, they beat them and commanded them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. They therefore departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for Jesus' name. Philippians chapter 1 verses 29 and 30 also add that, because it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer on his behalf, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here is in me. And 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 16 sums up, But if one of you suffers for being a Christian, let him not be ashamed but let him glorify God in this matter. Yes, we share in Christ's sufferings and glory. So, don't be ashamed, but glorify God instead. He is the Lord Almighty, the King of glory. Reason 4. Because judgment begins with God's household. This may surprise some of you, but this is mentioned in 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 17 and 18. But the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. If it begins first with us, what will happen to those who don't obey the good news of God? If it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will happen to the ungodly and the sinner? Thus, judgment begins with God's household on earth. But don't be afraid, be prepared instead. God is full of compassion and mercy. Reason 5 it's commendable before God. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 19 and 20 tell us that 
for it is commendable if someone endures pain, suffering unjustly, because of conscience toward God. For what glory is it if, when you sin, you patiently endure beating? But if, when you do well, you patiently endure suffering, this is commendable with God. Yes, enduring through suffering is commendable with God. Don't resist, but endure through it. God is faithful and just. Reason 6. To be blessed in the outcome. James chapter 5 verses 10 and 11 mention that. Take, brothers, for an example of suffering and of perseverance the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we call them blessed who endured. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and have seen the Lord in the outcome, and how the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 14 adds that, If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory and of God rests on you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. Sufferings brought us closer to God and enabled us to experience and know God. Many Christians with sincere faith can testify to these. Only that one should be careful not to let your heart be hardened or go bitter. Thus, don't give up, but persevere instead. May God bless us and make his face shine on us. Reason 7. To comfort others. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 5 mention that. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, through the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound to us, even so our comfort also abounds through Christ. Yes, the comfort we receive from God in our sufferings, helps us to comfort others in similar situations as well. Thus, don't downplay such matters, be open instead. He is the God of all comfort. So, with these seven reasons, how should we Christians best cope with sufferings? Romans chapter 5 verses 3 to 5 provide us some keys. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance character, and character, hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Firstly, glory in our sufferings. The world glory in successes, achievements, status and possessions. Here Paul reminded us that as Christians we glory in our sufferings instead. Because suffering produces perseverance, perseverance in praying, perseverance in our struggling journey, and perseverance in our trust in the Lord. Secondly, hope in our sufferings. Perseverance produces character, to be more Christ-like with the fruit of the Spirit. Character produces hope, a living hope in Christ of deliverance and salvation, not a hope of mere positivity nor a false hope of ending one's life. Thirdly, no shame in our sufferings. We need not hold on to the shame in or after our sufferings, when we see and experience God's love poured out on us through the Holy Spirit, displayed by His work in your labor of love. This is an amazing truth. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 19 adds that, so then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful Creator and continue to do good. Thus, fourthly, commit ourselves to our faithful God in our sufferings. And lastly, yes, continue to do good in our sufferings. We could draw the explanations from the above seven reasons for these. Hope that these verses reasons and points give us a clearer understanding and deeper insight about sufferings, and that they may help us go through sufferings in the light of God's will and purpose for us. Let us know your comments and do like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching and we shall see you in the next video. God bless.